than just buying stuff. They're using it to keep in touch with their friends. Advertising it is, is a distraction. You'll no longer find consumers who are sufficiently bored to just decide, oh well, I'll click on this ad and see what happens. People are even more engaged with the internet, so advertising and brands need to be more engaging to survive. So just a bit more about the decline of standard display advertising in the click-through rates. At the end of last year, this was presented as good news because the click-through rates in advertising after years of decline had finally leveled off. But they leveled off at 0.09% click-through rate, which is less than one in a thousand ads actually being clicked. So when the level off point is so close to zero, I don't know how that can be presented as good news in any way. So how can you solve the problem? There are several ways you can solve the problem. There's standard display advertising, you can just throw more money at the situation and try and get your brand on as many pages as possible. You never know, it might work. You can create a Facebook page, which nearly every big brand in the world has done, and lots of Facebook pages are an enormous success. But you risk a backlash if you do that. I remember once I registered for a Facebook page because I was quite keen uh, at the time on gambling on the internet football. So I, I registered as a fan of a, uh, a bookmakers. And what happened was, very soon afterwards, I realised that my newsfeed was full of all the odds from every premiership fixture. So I made a couple of bets uh, based on these feeds, and then soon after that, I was getting everything from like the uh, Ryman League, the Scottish First Division, all sorts of things were cluttering up. So I very quickly unliked uh, that particular brand's page. And in the US, over 81% of consumers who are on Facebook have unliked the brand. So there's a risk there. You can go on Facebook and you can register with a brand, and that's great. And if you're the brand, that's, that's a captive audience for you. But if you intrude on them too much and send them too much marketing stuff about your products and your brand, eventually they will unlike. And that is a very negative impression because they've not only been in, seen what you've got, you've scared them away. Now I'll talk about some successful, um, successful ways that brands have used Facebook in a sec. But there are certain rules that you have to follow on Facebook, not just on Facebook, but everywhere with advertising in the Facebook era. Don't intrude on people's social time by giving them your brand's message and trying to just to get them blindly to buy your stuff. You have to earn people's attention, give them something that they're going to enjoy or become engaged with or that's relevant to them, and handle them with respect. So, the next slide is, is yeah, admittedly, it is a picture of a massive squirrel, but the reason that I brought it up is because I am a fan of O2 on Facebook. I don't know if anybody else is, but it's, it, it's great. Because what they do is they provide you with something fun. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with phones or their brand, but it leaves a positive brand impact. What happened here was, it was a squirrel stare-out contest. What you do, you have to get a webcam on your computer, you have to align your eyes so that they reach a certain point, and then the squirrel, squirrel basically is, is staring you out. And the first one to blink loses. And I played this game about nine times and didn't actually manage to win. Uh, but I enjoyed it, and the brand, I, I, I recognised that O2 was trying to give me an experience that I would pass around to my friends and that I would enjoy. And these are the things that actually leave people with a positive perception of your brand. On the other hand, is this going to make me more likely to renew my contract with O2 uh, next time it's up? I, I don't think so. It depends on what phones they're offering, the amount of minutes I'm going to get. But still, it, it, it's good. And, and the thing about this is that because I've had fun playing games like this with O2, I don't mind so much that maybe once a week they send me all these special promotional offers asking me how long I've been with O2, you know, I could apply for this special discount if I use this many minutes. I don't mind. I'm not going to have that knee-jerk reaction and think, what are they doing, abusing my trust and posting this on my wall, because I also get stuff like this, which I strongly recommend. Anyway, enough about uh, the squirrel. It's called uh, Hemingway, if anyone wants to search for the game, that's Hemingway the squirrel. So, what I just said there about whether or not that particular campaign, that particular game is going to make me more or less likely to be loyal to the O2 brand, there was an article in the NMA last week. Social media campaigns can be fun for people who play them or, or 
people who consume them, but also for the people who create them, but are they worth anything? So essentially, the message that Paul Kitkat makes to the NMA is that however fun and engaging a campaign is, unless it speaks about the universal truth of your brand, it's essentially just candy floss, sponge sugar. So it can be fun, but it doesn't do anything to actually improve your position in terms of revenue. Real social commerce, and this is something which relates directly to Chow and the way that we've approached social advertising. Real social commerce is, or, or should be about, ratings, reviews, recommendations, and referrals. People, 90% of people now, before they make a purchase decision online, are looking for consumer reviews. Not professional reviews, specifically consumer reviews. And that's exactly what Chow does. I don't know how many of you uh, know about Chow, but it's a consumer review website that people contribute content. Uh, it, it works in a very similar way to Facebook, with one key difference, apart from the fact that uh, we're obviously not like, going to dominate the world with Facebook, like Facebook is. But the key difference is that Chow is a social platform, but it is based purely around products. So, taking this example, uh, this is a case study of a campaign that we ran for HP uh, uh, a few months ago. What we did is we put advertising, excuse me, slide trouble. We put advertising on the Chow website where we know people are looking for information about products. And we say wanted. We want Chow users to apply to test this product. So first of all, what we're doing is we're reaching people on a platform where they're looking for product information crucially. this product. We're speaking directly to them as child users. So people click through from this advertising and the click through rates were enormously high compared to the industry standard because we're you know, directly addressing people in the call to action. People click through to this platform here which we built specifically for HP. We create some video content of someone, uh, Ian Lee, a TV presenter, demonstrating how the product works in public, getting people to email pictures from their phone to this printer, because it prints directly from the phone. And we're asking people to apply to take part. We received over 5,000 applications from people who wanted to take part in this test. And what we're telling people is that we want to choose people who are going to write reviews about this product. That's the way HP is approaching advertising in the social arena. We want to get people on site, we want to choose brand advocates and get them to spread the message for us. So 5,000 applications from within the child community. And the way that we chose people who we were going to send these products to was by looking at their history and contributions to the child platform in the past. So we were able to choose people who've got a history of writing really detailed reviews that gets really good feedback from other child consumers. So just an example, this woman, Matty Groves, has written 156 reviews on Chow. We looked through them, they are all really well written. She had 204 people on Chow who trusted her in a circle of trust. So that's the equivalent on Facebook of having 200 friends, so a reasonably good circle of influence. History of really detailed reviews, chose her. And that, that's how we narrowed down, we chose people that we knew were going to generate content which would be of value to the client. Finally, we collected all these reviews and published them on this microsite which was used as a landing page for the product across the entire internet. So, their advertising at this point was saying, not please buy our product because it's the best, because we made it. It's saying, find out what other consumers think about the new HP uh, e all in one printer. So the click-through rate of the advertising was over 1% because people wanted to find out what real people say. That's something about the internet which, which has always been true. And when people click through, they don't just go through to a boring, bland brand's page begging them to buy something. They read what real consumers think about the product. We also invited this guy to a video shoot and shot him talking about the product. Essentially, it's a much more effective way of advertising, if you can do it, to actually get real people to do the work for you. Because as I said earlier, nearly everybody is reading reviews online. 
So you've got the option, you can either ignore that fact, just do standard advertising the way you always have done, or you can embrace the fact that the internet is now social and actually take the lead in generating these reviews yourself and also getting them ready in time for launch. So the most trusted source of information on the internet these days is other consumers. Now I thought this statistic looked a bit weird when I first saw it, because I thought, hang on, how come people don't trust their family, their colleagues, or professional reviews like the ones you find on sites like, like which? Well, the answer is quite simple, because if you look for a professionally written review on the internet, the chances are you're going to land on a page where you can see one person's opinion. Now that person might be an expert, but they're only one person. And because they're an expert, they might not necessarily be looking for the same things that a regular consumer is when they write their review. You can ask your friends, your family, but the chances are you're not necessarily going to know somebody who owns that particular product. The reason why people trust other consumers more, and the reason why other consumers provide the most valuable source of information, is quite simple. It's because you look for other consumers' opinions on the internet, and you'll find maybe on one page 50 to 100 different reviews all aggregated into one rating. And that will tell you much more accurately whether or not that product is, is, is right for you. So just going back to Facebook, in case um, you think I haven't been speaking favorably about Facebook so far, I've, I've got a very, very high opinion of Facebook. And some of the campaigns that I've seen on Facebook are, are literally mind-blowing. Like, for example, they did a campaign in the States for victory motorcycles, where they were able to target uh, everybody on the internet, uh, everybody on Facebook, sorry, who likes motorbikes. Uh, and that, that is something that you've never actually been able to do with that volume before. You've been able to target motorcycle websites, but everybody's on Facebook. So everybody on Facebook who says that they like motorcycles, if you're like a, a, a very niche classic style motorcycle like Victory, that is your entire target audience that you can reach with one campaign. So the advantages of Facebook as an advertising platform is that it, it, it offers more volume and, and new and better ways of targeting than, than, than anything else. And the reason why the value of Facebook is set to increase even further is because there's so much unrealized potential there. All the value of Facebook is based around potential. It's certainly not based about how much money it builds. It's based about how much money it will actually make when people realize how many different ways they can use it. Anyway, enough about me uh, talking about Facebook. Uh, back to Chow. Uh, if, what we do is we produce video content about products, uh, as well as just doing standard advertising. And we make real people the stars. And that is a much more credible way of doing the brand advertising than just doing things the old way, putting things on as many pages as possible and hoping that by the by people are going to uh, end up buying the product. You can't do that these days. It's not good enough just to have targeting. You need to involve people. Because if you don't involve people, they will feel excluded from your advertising. And they won't actually feel as though it's for them. They'll think it's all about you. So anyway, um, I'm not sure if I've got any more slides yet. Just to conclude, this is a quote that I found from someone on the internet who I hadn't heard of. But it sums up exactly, um, exactly the point of this presentation. Which is, in the past, brands were unknowable. There was no gap, there was no, there was no bridge, sorry, between the consumer and a brand. And it was a, it was a very one-way relationship where the brand would basically bombard you with their message and you would hopefully buy their product. But these days, brands that succeed need to be like people, need to provide a social experience, get people involved. And that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do with Chow, uh, and that's, that's what Facebook's doing as well. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah? I've got someone there. X Factor moment. Um, the, you, you was mentioning it earlier about uh, if you've got one professional review. Yeah. And normally, as a consumer, when you go on, that's fine because you're just getting one message. Yeah. 
And when you've got like 200 people reviewing something, you have massive skews in, in one star, five star. Yeah. How do you um, get the analytics right? Do you remove the outliers and just average out the, the whole content or do you include everything? Well, well on chat, what we do, oh, I don't think this is what we do is we rank all the reviews that are written by a particular product in order of how much positive feedback they've received from other consumers. So if you do have a list of 200 reviews like you say, you know that the ones that are most trusted and have been found most helpful by other consumers are right at the top. So if you get a sample of maybe the first three or four in that unmanageable list of 200, then you're going to get a fair impression of whether it's for you. You can also see quite easily if there are a couple of one-star and two-star reviews peppered in there. You can see exactly how many uh, of those reviews there are. You can uh, you, you can automatically go to one of those reviews to see if it's written by someone that you feel like you can trust. But you're right. It, 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 I mean, one of the downsides is that when you get so much information, it's it's impossible to read it all. And it's hard to know who to trust. But we that's how we try and deal with that that issue. For the reviews, I was just wondering, do you have any comments on high and low involvement brands? Because obviously, the high and low involvement brands, I mean, the computer you've got there, it's very high involvement brand. Right. But what about product, I don't know, like Heinz like Well, it's you funny know. you should mention that, because uh, I, I sometimes try and sell advertising to FMCG uh, companies, uh, and we do actually have over 100 reviews on Chow on Heinz baked beans. <laughs> because we're a platform where people can review absolutely anything, and we just we just want them to write about whatever they want. We, you know, the content's very useful to us. So, so yeah, it, it, everybody, far more people have uh, experienced Heinz baked beans than own an iPad, for example, or any specific single model of a Dell laptop. So it's natural that we'll have lots of content about that. Although. Quite why anyone would want to read all those reviews, I don't know. You, you either like them or you don't. Anyone else? Well, thanks very much. That's two more questions that I got asked last time I presented here, so uh, I'll see that as a success. Anyway, if you want to see a compilation of the videos that we've made, uh, just visit the Chow stand, which is somewhere over there. I can't remember the number, but just look at the map and uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks.